I first discovered uh, the Vomix, um, it must have been over 18 years ago, um, right at the beginning of my sort of cooking career. Um, slightly um, nervous about the thing at first, um, didn't fully understand its versatility, and then I got attached to it within weeks. The idea of running a professional kitchen and not having um, these things littered around um, scares me. Cooking is about finesse, lightness, uh, evolving dishes, and customers need to see that excitement on the plate every time they come to that restaurant. And I don't think my food would be where it is today um, with, um, without the barmix. Right, tomato and pepper gazpacho. The most important thing about this is all done in the same pan. And finish with the bar mix. Vortex action. Basically, just keep the bar mix in the center of the soup. Low speed and whiz. That generates air. It makes it a lot smoother. And more importantly, whilst that's going on, it just pures the soup brilliantly. Start off on slow. And then once you're confident after two or three minutes on slow, speed it up and it just creates a lot more volume, it purees within seconds, and more importantly, it's just all done in the same pan. So, in terms of speed, efficiency, nothing to wash, a nice, light, creamy gazpacho, and look, within seconds, it blitz into this amazing, smooth, silky, velvet, sexy, tomato, pepper gazpacho. The nice thing about this long, sort of extended stem is it's all sealed. So if you went past that, you can go up almost up to there, no matter how deep the pan is. And it's just a really nice way of glamorizing your food just before you serve it. And the flavor it brings by puring at the last minute just intensifies 10 times quicker than it would if you had to put it in a blender. Brilliant. OK, now just a little tap back on the stand and just check the consistency of it. Okay. Now I'm going to finish the soup with a little bit of olive oil. Olive oil and seasoning. Again, olive oil in. Nice, rich, extra virgin olive oil. A touch of balsamic vinegar. A little seasoning. And then a little bit of pepper. Again, bar mix into the centre. Low speed to begin with. Vortex action and just push. Every time I use this bar mix, it's like you know changing gear in your Ferrari. It's like the perfect sort of best mate to have around in the kitchen because it gets you up to speed with things ten times quicker if I was using um, a big blender or roboing things or putting soups through sieves, which is so old-fashioned. This has to be the perfect way of actually finishing off something quicker, easy, and there's no waste. Right. Now Back down, look, bowl, look at that soup now, in, the consistency is extraordinary, you've got everything in there, we haven't wasted anything, and for me, it's a perfect way of serving a wholesome soup, ready to go, and look, that. Needs a touch of oil on top. And there you go. That has to be the perfect way of finishing an amazing gazpacho. And the flavour is extraordinary. We've wasted nothing. Nothing's gone through a sip, nothing's gone through a blender. And the bar mix just sort of helps to drive it to that other level. I'm a self-confessed control freak that um, wants nothing but perfection. And as you know, I get upset when I don't get perfection. When you look at you know, how we cook, when we cook, and who we cook for. Customers, to me, are crucial. Without them, we're nobody. And every time I come face to face with customers, whether it's in the kitchen, whether I'm with them in the dining room, they want to know about my utensils, what, what, what keeps me going. Um, so they want to buy a little bit of that, don't they? It's like supporting Manchester United. You want your family to have Man United strips, and you change them every season and you want their away kit, their home kit. Um, customers now want to be part of you, so they want to find out what you're using. And if they can litter their kitchens at home with all your little appliances, then that makes their dinner parties more glamorous. Although I don't want to encourage them too much to have too many dinner parties, because can, then of course they won't come to the restaurant. However, um, for me it's information, and 
you know, I'm not an overcomplicated chef. We allow the food to speak for itself. And the better the ingredient, and the better the utensils, the little that he's doing to it. This little gadget is absolutely perfect for making your own sort of spice mix. This is polycarbonate. It's a really durable, tough little piece of machinery. And the idea is getting all your spices in there, blitzing it, and we're going to make a really nice sea bass spice mix. You'll start off with star anise. Now, again, star anise into the mix. And the beauty of this, of course, you don't have to chop them. You don't have to worry about crushing anything. Fennel seeds in. And the most exciting thing about this particular mix is that we do this and tailor make it around the fish that's available in the seasoning. And it's great for um, paste, curry paste. Look, white peppercorns, fennel seeds, star anise in. And just watch what happens. Extraordinary. Cardamom seeds. Cardamom seeds and star anise go brilliantly well together. Don't even need to pod them. And then finally, some really nice coriander seeds. And when you think how long it would take with a pestle and mortar to crush this, this is extraordinary because it grounds all the spices down within seconds. Right, lid on. Give it a little shake. And then bar mix on. And look, extraordinary. Look, beautiful. See? Now, amazing. And the nice thing about it, you can actually make these spice mixes instantly. This is um, a really nice way of coating a sea bass. And look, because it's nice and fine, we're going to season the sea bass, both sides, and then into a nice non-stick pan, olive oil, and then with all that spice mix, on top of the skin, rub it in, and because it's nice and fine, we can really get it in that skin and sort of almost perfume the sea bass, and it just smells amazing, it's not even cooked yet. Skin side down, non-stick pan, and look. Now this is the most amazing mix for fish, especially this time of year, and it is just full of flavour. The most important thing is you can vary your mixes. So great for breadcrumbs, chocolate, of course, get into a really nice fine powder and, of course, coffee beans when you want to sort of grind coffee bean whether you're making the most amazing coffee ice cream or the most amazing espresso. And, again, look, self-contained and you can vary these kind of mixes. Crucial. Okay, turn my sea bass. That's a fish nut, uh, slice piece nut. Look at that. Beautiful. The smell of that is amazing. And the most important thing about this thing is that it's just quick, easy, and you can make so many different kinds of spice mix that you can have your favorite season. We do it with all our chefs across all the restaurants where they sort of do their own little pick and mix. So they have their own varied little spice mix. And it's quite extraordinary how diverse that can become. And now the chefs have actually got their name on it. And it's something that it's like, is it Mark Sargent's seasoning? Is it Mark Askew? Is it Angela's? Is it mine? Because we're sort of a little bit precious when it comes to seasoning things, and this little machine is a way of sort of hiding all those little secrets in there, powdering them down, and then we give them to the young cooks to try and guess the smell of the spice in there. So, perfect. Okay, sea bass, look, turn that over. Now look what's happened now to that skin. Just look at the flavor, just look at the color, and the flavour, and because we've been grinding those spices down almost five sort of seconds before we started cooking with it, it's just so fresh in terms of pungent, it's powerful, and the blend of the star anise, cardamom, fennel seeds, peppercorns, coriander seeds is extraordinary. Amazing. I done one um, last week with some fresh lemongrass in there, and it was slightly wet, the powder, but the perfume was amazing. And the lemongrass was just sort of blitz into almost like a pulp, but the flavour was extraordinary. Okay, sea bass, ready to come out of the pan. Sauce. Now this is where 
for me, the bar mix becomes, you know, a completely, I mean, ten-dimensional tool in the kitchen because what we're going to do now is aerate the sauce and create a little bit of froth because that was my sort of, I suppose my ballpark really when I came out of Paris. We took sort of heavy sedated sauces and lightened the sauces up on the back of the bar mix because it incorporates a lot of air and that's how the whole fascination with these foam sauces started. But we're not obsessed by foam but we're obsessed with the lightness and the bar mix is just brilliant at finishing sauces and therefore you need a lot less on your plate and the flavour is extraordinary. Light and it's almost like it sort of bubbles in your mouth. Okay. Sea bass onto the plate. Look at those spices. Amazing. Onto the plate. So bring the sauce up to the boil. And to finish it, again, just place the barmix in the centre of the pan. And that does the work for you. Look, it just aerates the sauce. It's a really nice way of actually sort of taking four or five portions of sauce and stretching it to eight or nine portions of sauce. And the whole thing just lightens up. But look, again, and the nice thing about the bar mix, if you wanted to finish this sauce with some fresh basil, some tarragon, or fresh parsley, you don't need to spend time chopping the basil, the parsley. Get it in there and blitz it in. How many times have you seen people um, chop the hell out of parsley and then all of a sudden they put the parsley in the sauce and all the greens on the board? The nice thing about the bar mix is you can actually put the parsley, the basil, any herb in the sauce and it blitzes it. The sauce changes colour and look what's happened now. A sauce. Look at the aeration. Beautiful. When we come to finish our sauces, a lot of our sauces and our cooking today is a, lot, a very light way of eating. So we always finish with um, things like ice cubes um, in sauces, a little knob of butter, a little tablespoon of cream. And rather than cook with it, we finish with it. And the perfect way to finish it, of course, is to get it blitzed by the bar mix. And you know, for me, you know, my kitchen would never be the same. Um, unless we had these bar mixes littered around the kitchen. In fact, we have one on every section, whether it's the fish, the meat, the starters, the hot starters, the cold starters, the canapes, the desserts, even for finishing custards, or putting chocolate through a custard, or infusing a sauce, or blending a sorbet. It is extraordinary. Froth the sauce, and what I want to do now is just scoop that really nice, light froth. Look, out of there, on, and you've got that lightness. It's not sedated, it's not a heavy, seduced, thick, over-rich sauce, and it just puts another dimension to the dish. Because it's aerated, it's light, it's frothy, exciting. It's perfect. You could really identify my style uh, on the back of what we do with this. And I get really um, narked when chefs just jump on the bandwagon, endorse products, um, just for the sake of getting their name and their face uh, on a box, and it's embarrassing really. Um, this is you know, high quality, it's got longevity, it's not the kind of thing you have to replace within two years. The motors don't burn out, it doesn't happen. It's, you know, incredibly, you know, it's professional, and it's diverse. So, <laughs> this has integrity, and I wouldn't put my name to it unless I was, A, uh, been used to using them for 10, 15 years, and B, you know, it's, it's me, so it's, you know, it's a natural marriage and something I don't have any form of worry about because it speaks for itself. And when you think of what we spend on shoes nowadays, how much a pair of jeans cost nowadays, what kind of money people are spending in their kitchens, and stoves, granite, ice machines, the most amazing fridges, you know, this is a phenomenal piece of apparatus that I think down the line can actually save you money. This, for me, is a little jewel in the crown because this is called the aerator. It's slightly beveled, so the secret behind this, you get a carton of skim milk, and we're going to aerate that skim milk into almost like a bit of a smoothie. Then we're going to flavour that with raspberries, and it's a great way of sort of introducing fruit to kids in a way that you can somewhat disguise fruit in there. Whether you want to put a fresh peach in there, whether you want to put raspberries, blackberries, or even strawberries, but it's a really nice sort of afternoon snack that is very healthy and gets them up to speed with eating a lot of fruit early, quickly and completely stressless to get this done. So, five minutes before you make this, just get your skim milk and stick it in the freezer so it gets really nice and cold because the colder the milk, okay, the frothier and the lighter it will become. In, just one third full, one third full and watch again. In, 
Now, just watch that take place. It's already starting to thicken, and now it's got the texture of double cream. Within 15 seconds of being in there, but look, I'm going to put my raspberries in there very, very quickly. Raspberries in, and again, blend. And within seconds, look at the change of colour. It smells amazing. And if you want to put a little bit of fresh basil in there, basil's raspberry and skim milk, perfect. Now look. That has to be the perfect smoothie. That's quick, easy, totally healthy, nothing but. Mm. As an afternoon snack for the kids in between meals, that's perfect. And that was made out of skim milk, fresh raspberries, and the bar mix. You know, I've got four kids um, under the age of um, eight. And the most important thing about looking after them is making sure that they totally understand the balance between their fruit, their vegetables, their fish, and their meat and in a way that they don't become fussy with eating. And blending fresh raspberries through skim milk, it takes 30 seconds to do the most amazing smoothie. It is delicious. And they all have their favorite smoothies, but the fact it's actually made out of skim milk. It's healthy, it's high um, in vitamin C on the back of the raspberries. And again, it can be done all year round, depending on what kind of fruit you want to use. If you want something a little bit more chilled, then don't be scared to actually freeze the fruit prior to doing it. Uh, we've done it with frozen blackberries before, frozen, frozen strawberries, and um, even um, mango. Mango and skim milk, delicious. It's fascinating. When customers come to your kitchen, all they want to know is what you've got. You know, what kind of pan you're using? You know, how do you finish that sauce? How do you get it so light? Is that a whisk? You know, what, what do you do? And so they sit, they sit memorised, you know, and just absorb what's going on. And see these little bar mixes standing in the middle of a pot, 30 seconds before it goes out. And each dish just finished. Shh, Zap, 30 seconds, creates that lightness. And they get excited about that. And of course, they want to go home and try them. When you, when you cut um, with a knife, you've got to feel really comfortable about the handle. And the most exciting thing about the bar mix, it, it locks into the palm of your hand. So, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's comfortable. And, you know, it's fingertip control. You start on you know, low speed, increase to high speed, and honestly, you know, so it, it, it's like making fresh pasta. Once you've done it once, you, know, you want to continue doing it every time you look at processed pasta in a completely different way. Once you've held a bar mix, you won't want to go back. You know, it has to be the Ferrari of kitchen utensils in a way that it doesn't get any better than that. Enjoy it. It's extraordinary. And this um, is the blending blade. Um, perfect for finishing sauces. This is um, almost um, a way of just emulsifying everything rapidly. Um, high speed again, um, stressless, painless, and just you know, an amazing way of making a mayonnaise within seconds. But we're doing it with a twist, we're making it with whole eggs. And that stabilizes the mayonnaise. And it just makes it a lot lighter, a lot more uh, soothing, and so versatile. This little blade is brilliant for sort of blending um, different flavored vinaigrettes putting sort of basil, rosemary, thyme through vinaigrettes. That is a way of sort of just, I don't know, just perfumes the vinaigrette and blitzes it in a way that it just takes it to a completely different level. We've started using lots of vinaigrettes in all our sauces now to make things a lot lighter because customers don't want things that are heavy, rich and sedated. So I can't tell you how exciting it is when you just look at how easy a bar mix makes cooking. Um, simple, um, easy to execute and it's just uh, an amazing helper. Um, without getting stressed. Okay, mayonnaise. One egg, one whole egg. In. Bang. And then, tablespoon white wine vinegar. Teaspoon of mustard. We're using grain mustard. But you can use French mustard, English mustard. And then about 350 ml sunflower oil, nice squeeze of fresh lemon juice, 
And again, this is where the bar mix comes into its own because you put everything into the pot. You season it now and then attach the blender on and then simply high speed. Again, vortex action in and watch. Count. There you go. All of 10 seconds to make the most amazing mustard mayonnaise. That's great, whether you're putting that through crab, whether you're doing it with fresh coleslaw. How many times have we struggled in this country to make mayonnaise because it always splits? That is delicious. You've seen what it's like making a mayonnaise. I mean, extraordinary. When you think what we used to do, I mean, beating in. Um, the oil, dripping it in there slowly. You know, we make hollandaise. You know, we heat the olive oil and make the most amazing olive oil hollandaise within seconds. Nothing splits, nothing's over a bain-marie, nothing's arty-farty, nothing's long-winded. It's done instantly. In a normal service at work, we'd make mayonnaise and hollandaise sometimes three or four times a night. Fresh, vibrant, fragrant. I couldn't do it without the bar mix. And it's just a way of just speeding the whole process up. We have a hollandaise sauce that's finished with pink grapefruit and it's served over the most amazing poached trout. And the hollandaise sauce is made to order. It's extraordinary. I couldn't do that without this kind of tool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with it. And um, it got to a bit of a sort of um, state. I'm very sort of finicky. Every section has one. Every section looks after the blades, cleans it, and it's there. It's part of our apparatus. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's crucial for me. It's more important than having a fire extinguisher in the kitchen, and I wouldn't even attempt to cook without them now. Mm -hmm.